Hello, my name is Senor Kaffee and today I want to tell you a little bit about setting up translation or localization projects for games based on the RPG Maker game engine. The process I'm going to show you was set up for the German translation team of To the Moon or Zum Mond, as we would say if we would actually translate titles, which we almost never do. To get started you'll need a few things. First of all, an unpacked and unencrypted version of the game project with all the S's intact. For commercial games you'll most likely need to get in touch with the author of the game to get such a version. Second, an advanced text editor. For this tutorial I'll use EditPad Lite, but there are a lot of other options out there. Uh, please just don't use the standard Windows editor. Third, a tool called Remaker, spelled like the Spanish power metal band with a single glorious M in the middle. This tutorial will use version 3.8 of the tool, not the band. Fourth, a Google account. You might already have one if you're a YouTube user or use other products from Google like the reader. We will need that one later to share a few files via Google Documents. Fifth, translation help. Like me, you're most likely not a native speaker and might need some help with slang. Sites like urbandictionary.com will explain those strange expressions to you in plain English. Also, find an online dictionary for your language that knows colloquial English. For German, there's a great one at dict.leo.org. You'll find links to everything down here in the video description or on Google if I've been once again too lazy to keep those updated. All right, let's set everything up. Unpack the project somewhere on your HD. Then copy the DreamMaker files to the same folder and start the executable. From the menu, choose step 1. This will convert the maps to DreamMaker's own file format. After that is done, choose step 2. This will tell DreamMaker to analyze the DMK maps and write all bits of dialogue in a text file called, well, dialogue.txt. Close the DreamMaker window, fire up the text editor of your choice and have a look at that text file. Looks pretty complete to me. Uh, we'll talk about the inner workings of that file later. Uh, don't worry, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now we'll talk about working on a translation as a team. Open your browser, log into Google and switch to Google Documents. The service may have another name in your language. For instance, in German it is Texte und Tabellen. We will need to create two spreadsheets. The first one is the glossary. The glossary is to write down common guidelines, so that certain words, names, items and trademark expressions are always translated the same way. For now, you don't have much to write in it. So we get right to sharing that document. That is what the lovely blue box on the right is for. If everyone on the team has a Google account, you can set individual permissions. But for this example we won't be too paranoid and allow everyone who knows the link to edit the file. Uh, just be careful who you share the link with. The second spreadsheet will be our working copy of the dialogue script. Delete all comments except A and B. As you can see, the controls are pretty similar to Microsoft Excel. So if you're a pencil pusher like me, you'll feel right at home. Switch to your text editor, select everything and copy your text to the clipboard. Go back to Google Docs, paste the text in column A and then paste the same text in column B. So, why the same text twice? Column A will be left untouched throughout your project. It is here, so you can always quickly reference the original. Column B will be your working space. Your translation goes here. If your dialogues.txt contains a lot of lines, and to the moon is about 18,000 of them, it may make sense to use more than one sheet. To do this, don't select the whole text at once. Select chunks of about a thousand lines each. To avoid one source of error, always select whole scenes or maps if possible. Cut, paste, paste, format columns, format text, in that new sheet, rename sheet, delete columns, 
cut, paste, paste, format, columns, format, text, insert, new sheet, rename sheet, and so on and so on until you reach the end. Whew. Time for a little break. Once again, find the blue box and give your team permission to edit the document. We will leave Google alone for a moment to have a look at control characters in the dialog script. There are a few standard characters in the Apogee Maker documentation, but most projects use a set of custom characters anyway. If you have a look at to the moon, you see backslash dot for a short pause, backslash b for bold text and backslash i for italics. Just have a look at what happens on the screen and, in doubt, ask the author. Alright, let's say you've made some progress and want to test drive your work. Go to your project directory and rename the original dialogs.txt to something like dialogs.original.txt. Open a new file in your text editor and start copy-pasting the text from your column B. If you have trouble doing that, it is most likely a problem with your browser. A few of them don't allow websites to write to the Windows clipboard for security reasons. That's why I'm using Internet Explorer in this video, although I'm usually more of a Firefox guy. If you're working with several sheets, take care to not accidentally mess up the number of blank lines in between chunks. Events are separated by a single blank line, maps by three blank lines. Before you save the text, make sure that your new file will use UTF-8 encoding. There are several ways to encode special characters, like our beloved umlauts, in a text file, and if you use the wrong one, we won't see them in the game. In EditPad, use Convert Text Encoding. Whoops, Windows 1252, that's not what we need. Choose to encode original data with another character set. Click UTF-8 and OK. Nice, now we can save this file as our new dialogs.txt. Time to open DreamMaker again and try one of the other options. Choose 3 to import the new dialog to the DMK maps. Then choose 4 to convert the DMK maps to RPG Maker maps and actually change something in the main game. Yeah! And now, time for a little playtesting. Wow, a little rough around the edges, but our characters are actually speaking German. How cool is that? I'd say this finishes the technical part of our little tutorial. The rest is just work, testing, work, testing, work, testing, work, testing, even more work, even more testing. I hope my little tutorial has given you all the information needed to start your own RPG Maker translation project. I'd gladly answer all further questions in the comment sections of this video. Until next time, your Senor Cafe.